Hi everyone. In the previous part, we have gone through diffusion. Now, in this part, we will discuss about active transport mechanism of uptake of nutrients. This active transport is the second type of uptake of nutrients. So let's let us have a quick review of diffusion that we discussed in the part one. So here is the one which I already told you. The diffusion is a movement of molecules passing from higher concentration to the lower concentration. And this diffusion is of two types. One is passive diffusion and this is your facilitated diffusion. So we have discussed in detail about this diffusion in the part one. So you can have a look if you are in doubt about these two. So there I told you the difference between the diffusion and active transport is mainly the utilization of energy. So in the passive diffusion and the facilitated diffusion, there will be no usage of energy. So that is what you have to remember. But coming to the active transport system, so the name itself is indicating active. So when you will be active, when you are having the more energy, that means you are supposed to spend more energy. So in the same manner, if the bacteria want to have this kind of transport of nutrients, obviously it have to spend some sort of a metabolic energy that is in the form of either ATP or proton gradient. So coming to the definition of active transport, active transport is the transport of solute molecules of higher concentration or sometimes at low concentration also it will try to take that is against the concentration gradient with the use of metabolic energy input. It can maintain a concentration of solute molecules several times higher on one side of the plasma membrane than the other. Bacteria normally utilize two different active transport systems to uptake nutrients. The systems are like this. Binding protein transport system. The other names for it is going to be the ATP binding cassette system or simply we call it as ABC. A indicates ATP, B indicates or represents binding, C indicates the cassette. ABC transport us and the second type that it is usually using is membrane bound transport system so we will discuss about these two types of active transports now so the first one coming to binding protein transport system or abc transport systems or atp binding cassette transport system okay now this uh, let's see the parts of this uh, ABC transportals or ATP binding cassette system or binding protein transport system. That means some uh, type of proteins are associated with one another and they are going to present in the plasma membrane or inside the plasma membrane and outside the plasma membrane. All together is being a cassette acting as a system to transfer the solute molecules that is the substrate molecules from the outside into the cell. Let's see what are the components of this ABC transporter system. So here if you observe here the pink color is a solute binding protein system or substrate binding protein molecule. Now the yellow color here they are representing is your substrate molecule and here this is a transporter where the other name for this transporter is going to be called as a uh, ABC transporter where here they have written just as a transporter and here the ball like structures which are present inside the cytoplasmic matrix is going to be called as nucleotide binding domains okay and all together we have seen a protein called as substrate binding protein or solute binding protein and our ABC transporters and then the nucleotide domain or nucleotide binding domain. So these are the main components of our ABC transporter system. 
Now, what is the mechanism? How uh, a bacterial contain this binding protein transport system is involved in uptake of nutrients? Let's see. The substrate binding protein. So, where is your substrate binding protein? Here it is. The substrate binding protein bind the substrate molecule to be uptaken and then interact with the ABC transporter. So now this binding protein transport system will take the substrate and that will move near to our ABC transporters. Now what happens? Once this substance binding protein or solute binding protein comes and attaches to the ABC transporters, these ABC transporters form a pore in the plasma membrane and the substrate molecules are transported through the pores to the inside of the cell. This transportation is not going to occur free of course. They are going to charge something. So what is that something is nothing but our ATP. So how that ATP is being derived? by using this nucleotide binding domain. Once the ABC uh, receptors gives the signals of having the attachment of molecule outside, now the nucleotide domain hydrolyzes the ATP into the form of ADP and phosphate and the ABC transporters will carry this phosphate that is your substrate molecule from outside into the side into the cell. Now what happens to this sol solute binding protein? This again goes and carries another molecule of the substrate and this process will continue unless it is going to have a sufficient quantity of nutrients or substrates. And about 40% of uh, transport systems in E. coli or the binding protein transport system that is this kind of the protein system will be seen in major 40% of the E. coli bacteria where they are used that means the E. coli bacteria are using this binding protein transport system to transport uh, different types of sugars, amino acids, vitamins and ions etc. For example sugars you can see here are arabinose, maltose, ribose and go on etc. And then coming to the amino acids, we know the glutamine, histidine, leucine, all those things and vitamin ions, all these things that is sugars, amino acids, vitamins will be transported by using this binding protein transport system or the bacteria is going to utilize this system to uptake the nutrients from its surrounding. So as these proteins, that means your binding protein, your ABC transporters, nuclear tight binding domains, all these are attached to the plasma membrane. So maybe these are being termed as binding protein transport system. So that's all about the first type of uh, active transport that is binding protein transport system. Let's move to the next one, membrane bound transport system. Membrane bound transport system. Uh, where the bacteria use only the membrane that is a plasma membrane that utilize a proton gradient so that's also very important here uh, there in the previous uh, binding protein system there it utilizes the ATP uh, directly metabolic energy and here in the membrane bound transport system we are using uh, that means the bacteria is going to use the proton gradients either in the directly manner or in an indirect manner so bacteria use membrane bound transport system uh, membrane bound transport system because of uh, not having the binding protein system acting properly so obviously it have to go for with the other option that is membrane bound transport system there is no not necessary to have both or only one or it may have the both also it depends upon its condition where it is surviving so coming to the membrane bound transport system, the membrane bound transport system lacks special substrate binding proteins that occur in binding protein transport system. That's what until now I'm telling you that in this membrane bound transport system, we don't have any special substrate binding proteins. So membrane bound transport system of bacteria 
may utilize, this is very important, may utilize the proton gradients either directly or indirectly. So direct means, what is a proton gradient? So H plus. So you may see in the electron transport chain, that's what we are going to discuss now. So either directly or indirectly. The direct use of proton gradient, which is also called a symport. So that I'll tell you now by uh, showing this figure, you'll come to know. So this is the inside of the cell of the bacteria and this is the outside of the bacterial cell and this obviously is the plasma membrane. So what is the first type of uh, membrane bound transport system? That is uh, direct use of proton gradient. So let's see here. So here are the protons which are being thrown out due to the electron transport chain and once the proton gradients are gone out maybe there will be a lower proton gradient here so there is a need of these protons to move back into the cell. While coming back into the cell these proton molecules are going to have the uh, simultaneously a substrate molecule is also going to come along with this proton. So as this proton is bringing simultaneously a substrate molecules along with it towards the inward uh, towards the inward pumping of protons inside the cell. So that is going to be called as symport type of uh, uh, symport type of mechanism. So here you can see this is a substrate molecule and this is your proton, assume it as a proton. So simultaneously the proton and the substrate molecules are getting inside the cell. So that's why it is called as symport, where the proton gradient is directly involved for the entry of the substrate molecule. That's why this type is being named as proton symport system or direct use of proton gradient. So let's see the this the second type of uh, uh, membrane bound transport system that is indirect use of proton gradient. So this indirect use of proton gradient indirectly is being utilized not a direct form like how we discussed in the direct use. So this indirect use of proton gradient is also called as antipole. Remember antipole that means when proton is coming inside the substrate is not going to come. When proton is going outside, the substrate will enter. That's why this is called as antipore system. By looking at the figure, you can come to know. So, in the indirect use of proton gradient, what is happening is, because uh, bacteria may also use proton gradients to drive active transport indirectly, often through the plasma membrane, to the formation of sodium ion gradient. So what uh, here the proton is being thrown out and once the proton is thrown out the sodium ions can uh, tries to get inside. So here these two molecules are antipode. Now the question is with our substrate molecule. So the sodium ion and the sugar are showing the same port whereas the proton. So don't get confused. Here the proton is letting in the substrate molecule by going outside. So that is why we call it as antipod. I'll tell you in detail about this one. In this process, the sodium transport system, so this if we are going to consider as a sodium transport system, pumps sodium ions from inward to outward in response to the outward to inward of protons. So the protons, when go outside, the sodium ions comes inside. So during this process, what is happening? Such link to transportation in which the transported substances move in, in opposite directions is being called as antipode. That means the protons are going out and the sodium is coming in. The sodium gradient generated by this proton antipode system is responsible to drive the uptake of nutrients or substrates. The sodium ion, this one, pumped inside or outside the, uh, the sodium ion pumped the out the, uh, sorry, excuse me. The sodium ion pumped outward the plasma membrane attaches to a carrier protein and tends to change its shape. Now, 
the carrier protein then binds to the substrate molecule so here our substrate molecule tightly and orients its binding sites toward the cell interior now the sodium ion then dissociates from this carrier molecule and gets inside the cell along with the sodium ion the substrate molecule also getting inside so like this the sodium ion uh, will bring the substrate molecules and again the carrier molecules opens to the next sodium ion and the substrate molecules and the other substrate molecule would follow with this sodium ion now this uh, kind of uh, system which is going to act again as this proton outward and the substrate inside we call this as antipore type of system and as ratio coli uptake sugar such as uh, mellibulose and amino acid like glutamate with the help of proton antipode system so here in the same figure i have i'm going to show you both the symport as well as the antipode antipode is in reference to the sodium ion and the symport is directly sodium ion and the substrate molecules so if you see this one now you can understand that this is a unipode which we find in the um, general diffusion where simply the substrate molecules will go inside that's all no need of anything but in the symport and the antipode the proton along with the proton if the substrate molecules comes inside we call it as a symport and if the reverse of the proton gradient uh, allows the substrate to come inside this is going to be called as antipode system so that's we finishes of the second type of uh, uptake of nutrient mechanism that is diffusion and the third uh, type root translocation will be seen in the coming part thank you